Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final book of the Art Journey series. This book of imagination I call Breaking the Walls of Reality. Breaking the walls between your imagination and your skills. That will allow you to create your own design straight from your own imagination. As I mentioned before in the introduction to the series, in order to draw from imagination, you need to have a huge visual library in your mind to draw from. The golden rule in art is that you can draw what you don't see. And yes, drawing from imagination is also seeing. It's seeing what's inside your mind's eye, or your memory, or your imagination. In order to draw from imagination, you need to be able to have a large visual library in your brain. Without a large reservoir of objects, scenery, and characters in your memory, you will have nothing to extract from. It's like expecting to get water from an empty well. It just won't work. So in order to be able to fill that visual library in our memory, we need to change all the rules. The way you study, the way you use reference, and all the methods of studying will have to change as well. Studying without thinking will lead you to copy, and that will be just forgotten the minute you are done drawing. So in this chapter, we're gonna change the way you study and the way you apply what you learned all together. We will apply all the fundamentals we learned in the past book to create our own stories and designs. I talked a bit before in the series introduction about each chapter in this semester, but let's dive a bit deeper into the first chapter of the series. As I mentioned before, it took me a good 3 to 4 years to even realize what the wall was and how to break it. I didn't understand at first that I needed to change the way I study and draw and paint in order to go through it. So you may be wondering, what did I do wrong? How did I use to study? I used to do one thing, copy, and copy a lot. After becoming a painter for so many years, or the equivalent of having the knowledge of the second book of the series, all I can do was painting, copying photos. Copying photos so good it was almost 90 or 95% exact replica. I thought in my mind that was the ultimate art skill. To be able to see things as they are and paint them exactly the way they look. I didn't change any details while painting, I painted everything in the original photo, including the texture of the skin, the exact color choices. I thought being a hyper realist was the ultimate goal of learning art. It was a great feeling to know that I finally reached the final step of creating art. Of course, that didn't last long. When I tried to paint my own ideas, it went bad and it went bad really quick. It was as if I was back to zero all over again. I just couldn't draw anything from my imagination. The vast difference between my painting skills to my conceptual art was depressing. I almost stopped painting because of the how bad it felt not to be able to create something from my own mind. So I tried to look for answers out there, asking other artists, and almost all of them said the same thing. Expand your visual library. You can draw what you don't know. One artist said, even if I can draw anything I want, and I never saw an elephant before, I won't be able to draw it without reference. Or at least drawing it a hundred times so I can memorize it enough to draw it without a reference photo. So I thought the next logical step is visual library. Of course, I didn't know what to study or how to study it. So I thought, study everything, which was a bad idea. Cause life isn't that long enough to be able to study everything. But nonetheless, I started doing studies from photos and other designs and I did it all wrong. I couldn't get out of the same problem. I practiced almost 8 years to be able to copy. It's the only thing I know how to do right. So when I started to study the subjects for my visual library, I did exactly that. Copy. Copy everything I see in the reference, line for line. Paint the same colors. Draw the same line thickness, same pose, same everything. In that time, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. I thought this is studying. All painting is good painting, right? All practice is good practice. But dear God, it was absolutely not true. I filled over 500 pages of studies. Animals, landscape, characters, everything. If you ask me now to draw any of them, I would have absolutely no idea how to. I have no idea what I drew and what details I painted. I completely forgot all of them. It was like a kid studying for a high school exam, only to forget the whole thing after one minute of leaving the exam room. To know why that happened, here is what my mindset was at the moment of studying. I put the reference on the left and start drawing, thinking, yes, this is a medieval soldier with a unique armor, swords and shield. I will start from the head, focusing on all the details, memorizing everything, and one minute in, I'm totally zoned out, completely unfocused and my brain is on full autopilot, copying exactly like before. Honestly, sometimes I didn't even realize I was drawing till one minute away from finishing up. I surprised myself so many times that I finished a whole page and I didn't even realize what the heck I was drawing. It was just a bizarre experience. 
like out of body experience daydreaming just focusing on the audiobook novel i'm listening to while copying every reference as it is 500 pages later and i tried to do one original painting of my own and yeah it fell flat again i didn't learn anything without a reference or even with a reference i couldn't change a single detail on my own this was very frustrating I needed a way to stop my mind from zoning out or going into autopilot while drawing. I needed to be focused as I practice so I can learn what I draw and realize that to be able to do that I need to understand first what I'm drawing. So how did I change the way I study from reference? It didn't come easy. I had to try so many ways, listen to so many tutorials and ask so many artists out there to figure out a way to interrupt my mind from phasing out. The first step to do so is to stop copying the reference. I had to study the reference not as a whole unit, but as sections, parts, and subjects inside one reference photo. So instead of saying one image, you are understanding what is in the image. What is the character doing? How is he standing? What is his armor made of? What materials? How is the light shining on the landscape? What colors? What time of the day? Is it a historical image from the past or the future? Is this animal a desert creature or living in a forest? What does it eat? All these questions and subjects allowed me to dissect my reference photo into different mini references that I can study, which in turn made me question every aspect of the reference, breaking my auto-copying techniques to understand what I am seeing, seeing them as subjects, themes, objects, instead of floating lines and colors. And here comes what I talked about in the beginning of this series, about the talent versus skill issue. Sure, there are people who are born with exceptional memory and talent as we all know. But for the rest of us, talent will only come from sharpening our own skills. And expanding your visual library will be the main source for your talent. After filling up your well of knowledge and imagination with thousands of studies, you will be able, with repetition of course, to create great and inspiring art of your own. In this book, we will have three very different chapters. In short, they're gonna be seeing and understanding what you study, mixing and matching your subject of study, and finally creating your own narrative and painting your own ideas. Now in chapter 1 of this series, we're gonna learn how to understand the subject we are studying, expanding our visual library the right way. In this chapter, I'm not changing any aspect of what I'm studying yet. This will come in the next chapter. So for now, we're gonna understand why we draw. Instead of copying the subject while our brain is set on automatic, or what I call drawing like an inkjet printer, line for line, which was a good technique back in the first book, by the way. But this won't work in this book. Breaking the walls of reality requires a whole different set of skills. And this is what we're gonna do for chapter 1, transforming the way you copy your reference to understanding the subject matter you're attempting to study. In this chapter, we're gonna dissect our reference images and understanding what they are about. We are not designing or changing any aspect of it yet. We will leave that to chapter 2 and 3. In this lesson, we're gonna take apart a reference photo. We're gonna study and see how many things we can extract out of it. We will not tackle lighting or materials or composition or perspective just yet. We are just simply looking at the picture and understanding every part of it as objects and parts. Whatever you do, do not copy. This lesson and the rest of this chapter will be the barrier between your mind and your eyes, preventing your mind from spending so much time on one area that is completely phasing out, or going to automatic mode. So we're gonna use what we learned in the second book to be creative with the subjects we are studying. We're also gonna look at our reference image in terms of functionality, forms, parts, design aspects, and subjects like armors, clothes, weapons, mechanical parts, and so on. Later in this chapter, we will study other aspects like light, values, materials, perspective, compositions, and so on. Okay, now we talked about the introduction of chapter 1 and the introduction to lesson 1. Let's dive into it. The examples I'm using here in this lesson will include photos from real life, concept art from existing designs, and master art painting. Now I know some artists out there will frown upon drawing from other artists designs, but I think when you are learning, you should use Anything that can help you expand your artistic horizons, including designs from other artists who are higher in skills and visualization than you. I think it's totally fine as long as you are studying. When you start to create your own work, it's better to use photos from real life only, and just glance over other artists' work for influence. Be careful not to copy their designs when you are creating your own. In this lesson, I'm gonna cover five different subjects. Studying character design, animals, mechanical objects and vehicles, 
landscape, architecture, and interior design. Every subject will have three different examples, from a photo, a concept art painting, and a master artist painting. This way, I think I will cover all the aspects of this lesson. So in total, there are gonna be 15 different examples. Since you guys chose the longer video format, I'm gonna do all of them in this video, instead of separating them into five different ones. Now the practice session took about 9 to 10 hours, so I had to speed up some of the videos included. So you are seeing around one and a half hour of 10 hour session. Of course the goal here not to show you how to draw things, it's just how to separate your reference images into different designs. So without further ado, let's start. The first subject I'm gonna cover is character. First image is uh, a steampunk cosplayer from a photo. Instead of going right into the details copying line for line, I will try to look through the custom and figure out the pose of this guy and draw the figure itself without anything on. This is a great exercise for figure drawing, cause you won't be able to see everything behind the clothes, so you have to rely on your knowledge of anatomy and figure drawing to do this. If you have any problem with this, go back to the second book and check out the anatomy and figure drawing lessons to help you out with this exercise. While drawing this, your brain will be working all the time, trying to solve problems and issues that involve figuring out how the body will look like under the clothes. You won't be able to zone out while drawing this, because the information isn't fully there, and this is the main trick behind this lesson. Always giving your brain problems to solve as you are drawing. Now we are done with the figure, we can move to the clothes. And only the clothes, without any accessories on top of it. No hat, no guns, no belts. And if you notice, I'm not drawing it line by line, I'm actually starting from the bottom layers up to the top ones. So I'm starting with the shirt, then the vest, then the jacket, then the cape in that order. Later in more advanced chapters, I'm gonna draw every layer on its own using imagination to complete the hidden parts, like I did with the uh, New Horizon uh, concept study sheet. But as for now, we are still not changing anything, just dissecting the image. The good thing about drawing the figure first, it will help you a lot as you are drawing the clothes on. You will understand what you are drawing instead of just following what you see. So when I wrap a certain part of the clothes on the arm or the legs, I know how it's wrapping around it, and where it's stretching or loosening up. You have to use a bit of imagination to draw behind the accessories, but it isn't that big of a deal as later we will draw different armors or different weapons in different positions and shapes. Maybe you can take a sword from the right and throw it in the left or change a sword to a gun and so on. Now I will zoom in a bit and draw the accessories, starting with the hat. I'm using the mannequin as a base to help me draw through the hat. Next, I'm drawing the pipe. Remember, draw things as 3D objects instead of 2D. 
Draw through it. Now let's draw the bag. Try to complete the hidden items by imagining how they will look like in that position without anything covering it. Again, in later lessons we will rotate objects and accessories out of reference to the straight position or in three different positions from top, side and left or right. But for now we'll just draw it as it is. Now I'm drawing the belt and the bullet sashes, again drawing all around the object as if the body is transparent. Next, the weapons. I'm cheating a bit here by drawing it more in the upright position to help with drawing straight lines, but that's ok. Here I'm using the first gun as a template to draw the second gun out of it, since they look like they have the same proportions. This helps as well to keep my brain active the whole time I'm drawing this. Now the third gun. The third gun is more futuristic and steampunk, also I had to use a bit of imagination to complete the handle since it's covered by his hand. And here you have it, 8 different parts out of a reference photo. I didn't zone out once while drawing all this. I know exactly what I drew, and how things work, and how he wear his clothes, and what accessories he has on. Now I know all this, I want to be sure that I don't forget it, so I decided to draw all of it as a unit again, but with a completely different perspective based on all the knowledge I had drawing all these parts. I start with the figure pose again to prevent me from copying lines and details straight on, and then go on with the layers of the clothes. Always catch yourself if you fall into the copying mode at any time.
And there it is, the first study is done. The second character I'm using here is a concept art from a concept artist from Russia. And this is his name. I probably won't be able to pronounce it right. His line work is amazing. You can check out his work on Earth Station. As I mentioned before, other artists frown upon studying other artists' work. But to me, it's like studying old master artists' work. If someone is better than you or on a higher skill level, it can be considered as a master artist to you. So studying the way they work will help you develop your skills even further. Just make sure you don't copy their work as your own or claim it to be yours when it's not. We are understanding the designs as if it's a photo from real life without trying to copy the style of the artist we are studying. So this time I didn't start with the figure. Instead I decided to do the portrait first which is another part you can study out of the reference photo. Next I'm gonna do the figure drawing like before using different ways to start the figure. If you didn't check my figure drawing series yet, it will give you many options to start your figure drawing with an explanation for each method. It's called the top 20 ways to draw the figure. Next part is this little skull on her left side. Looks interesting to draw on its own. Okay, now let's draw the clothes. 
We're gonna leave out the accessories and swords and just draw the clothes on its own. It's very satisfying drawing things apart and not exactly like the reference for some reason. You just feel that you are learning instead of copying things as it is. Ok next I'm gonna draw the swords, as you can see I'm changing the orientation of the sword which I will go a bit more deeper into a later lesson. I just did it here cause it's easier to draw swords in vertical manner or horizontal manner. Next I use the sword itself to draw the sword cover or the scabbard on top of it using the sword as a guide. Here I have the study with all the parts side by side. Now I'm ready to draw the whole character with everything on, starting with the figure. As you can see I'm moving around the character, drawing different things in completely different ways. It's a bit different way to draw as a concept artist than a painter. You have to try to confuse your brain and give it larger problems to solve at every stage of the drawing. 
when you start feeling that you are copying things, move to the other side of the character or the painting, so your brain doesn't settle on one area. And this is it, seven different parts out of a reference image. Finally, let's try a painting out of an old master art. And for this example, I'm using my top favorite master artist of all time, Jean Leon Jerome, one of the greatest artists of the 19th century. This painting is called Working in Marble, which I thought is a great example to draw from since it has many different elements in it. So I'm gonna start with the obvious part, a nude figure, which is basically a figure drawn by itself. Next I'm gonna use the figure drawing as a guide for the proportion to draw the sculptor figure. After that I will use the figure drawing to draw the custom and portrait of the sculptor.
Okay, now let's see what else I can use here. There are a few creepy masks to use as portrait practice on the left, starting with the old guy. Then this creepy one, even though it's a bit out of focus, you can add a bit more details to it on your own, just to make it look good. I will draw this statue next. The pose is a bit tricky and great for figure drawing practice. And there we go, different parts from one master study. Of course later we can study the light, the perspective, the composition and many other things out of this same painting. But for now we will just stick with the parts. Now I can of course draw the whole thing again but it's gonna take forever to draw all of it. But if you want to practice more you just draw the whole thing after you draw the parts. But now you will draw it with more knowledge of the parts you're drawing. So we're gonna move on to the next subject animals. Now for animals, uh, they won't have as many parts as a character, but you can still extract many different details from one image. This first image is uh, a photo of a chameleon and I start with the general pose and the shape of the animal without going into details yet. After that, let's study the unique design of the eyes. As I'm drawing it, I'm trying to understand how the eyes work from the side view. You don't have to do it yet, because later on we will draw every part in different angles, but this is just for me to understand. For now, just draw the part by itself. Next, I'm drawing the arm and the kind of a claw this animal have and the way it opens up. After that, I draw the unique tail of the chameleon and the way it extends. Here I'm studying the scales on the body and the way they change size from one place to another. Finally, I'm drawing the whole thing with all the details I studied so far.
and here we have the whole animal and the parts we got out of the reference. Next one comes from one of the great concept arts out there, with this piece of concept art for the sci-fi 2012 film John Carter. You can check out his work on DeviantArt, it's really amazing. So we'll start with the basic pose of the animal. Of course this isn't an existing animal, so the skeleton won't be like anything we have. You can look at it as a, a part of an elk and a rhino mashed together. Now I use the basic figure to draw the saddle and the fighter on top by itself. Then we draw the face of the animal. And then the twin legs as a unit. Then the tail The texture and material of the legs And then finally do the whole thing together
Later on, we will have to match our own creatures and create something similar to this from our own imagination. But for now, we will call this study complete. Next example comes from the another great master artist. He is a Dutch animalier, which means an artist specialized in drawing animals mainly. This one called peacocks. And as you can see here, there are so many things to draw out of it. So let's start. I will start with these little shakes on the right. I will try to draw their motion first as a figure, then add the details later on. Then the big white chicken. Moving on to the next letter one. Now let's go to the left and draw some of the birds there. Now let's try drawing some of the big birds. Now the biggest one of them all, the main subject of this painting, the peacock. Moving on to other birds.
As you can see, I didn't even draw all of them. And I have 10 different parts of this one master painting. It's a great workout session. Alright, on to the next subject. Vehicle and objects. Starting with this beautiful classic 1931 Cadillac V12 convertible coupe. And I start with the certain parts on the vehicle first, before going into drawing the whole thing. For example, I start with the wheels. I'm doing it freehand here instead of accurate perspective, since my plan isn't to copy it exactly, but to study the details on it a bit more. Next, I check out the small headlights on top of the wheel arc. Then the larger headlights. Then the front grille. The wheel arc Finally the doors Now I will draw the whole thing starting with the box in perspective Remember, when you are drawing mechanical objects, always start with simple shapes in perspective, then start curving the details out. I'm still in a freehand mode here, even when using perspective, I still don't want to get into full perspective mode just yet, I will leave that for later lessons. As I'm drawing this, I'm trying my best not to fall into copy mode. That's why I'm jumping from one place to another and not completing one section from start to finish. I'm treating this as a personal design rather than a reference study. You can add a bit of shading here and there if you want, but uh, it's not necessary for this lesson, so it's up to you. And there it is. The car and some of spark them. Next, instead of doing concept art piece, I simply picked a different variation of the subject, from a personal vehicle to a utility vehicle. This time I'm gonna start by showing you here that even if the object looks complicated, just remember to reduce it to its basic shapes. Don't go into full details right away. Okay, now we're gonna start drawing some of the loader elements.
Next we're gonna draw the whole thing from starting from basic shapes. Now we can add the details. Remember to vary your line weight as you are drawing. Objects in front or in the shadows or overlapping will get thicker lines than the objects in the back. You can check out the line weight lesson in the second book if you want for more details on the subject. You can add values on your studies if you want, again it's optional, it's up to you. And there it is, a loader and its parts, done. Finally, for this section, I'm gonna study a mechanical object with a steampunk theme. This one is done by a great concept artist from Blizzard Entertainment. You got to check his art station, he has amazing mechanical work like no other. I usually choose steampunk design because they are the most complicated design of all other genres out there. And they are really interesting to look at. This one took around 5 hours to do. Almost half the painting session for this video. It was very complicated but very enjoyable at the same time. So as always, I start with a certain part of the design first to get a bit of understanding of the elements and the theme of the design I'm studying. Still using freehand in here and a bit of perspective to draw all these parts. Now after 4 or 5 parts I'm ready to draw the whole thing completely and I start with a simple box and then curve up the smaller shapes in it. This is basically like sculpting but in 2D. Now that I have the overall shape, I can get a bit closer and start detailing the inside parts. As I'm drawing all this, I'm trying to understand the tiny details I'm drawing and imagining using them in different designs of my own. Certain screws or levers or bars I can use later on my own work. 
Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're not gonna post any of this. This is just for your own visual library. You can leave it as it is if you feel that you learned enough from it already. So don't be a perfectionist and go all the way. Just learn what you need and move on to the next item. Sometimes it's easier to draw things flat and then move it into perspective. Sadly, this can only work in digital art. Don't be afraid to use shortcuts wherever you can. There is no shame in cutting corners as you are drawing details. Just make sure you are learning the essential parts without any corner cutting.
a little bit of a cleanup and line weight will give your object much more visual appeal. That's of course if you want to do so. It's not required for this study. Adding a bit of value variation just for visual clarity. And here is the subject and all the sparse done. Next we'll try some landscapes, starting with this photo of some rocks on a beach. Let's draw some of these rocks first. Start with the basic shapes before you start sculpting the details. We add some values and hatching here and there. Don't take too long doing it, just make it look nicer if you want. Next, let's try to check out this weird rocky ridge. This by itself can be used as a concept art piece of a modern city inside a cave. Thinking about these things will help you later on doing your own art. Take notes of it as you are drawing it for later. We will use things like that for making our own art in chapter 2 and 3, yet to come. Let's try drawing some of the rocks at the sea and draw that part over there. Finally, let's draw the whole thing, now that we understand the basic shapes of the elements in it. And there it is, a quick landscape study with the elements around it. Now this is one complicated concept art scene from Disney's new upcoming avatar land that they are planning to open in Disneyland. Scene like this is a gold mine to explore and to find great subjects to study. So let's start by drawing some trees. There are so much details in every part so try to learn the general shape and gesture before going into full details. Stop yourself if you got into copy mode and choose a different part right away. Now we draw some bushes and weird aliens plants next. These floating rocks are a great subject to study, especially the connection and the waterfalls on them and in between.
Weird flowers are next. Some trees and bushes to draw. Now we have all these parts, we are ready to draw the whole thing. Again, I'm not trying to completely copy it, just to get the sense of landscape in general. Later on, we will study the lights and composition on their own in a different lesson. I'll start with the basic layout, where I can see the foreground, middle ground, and the background. No details required at this stage, just the major element of the landscape. Now we can add a bit of details and perspective. It's always good to separate the background and make it a bit more lighter, so you don't confuse yourself or the viewer. Let's add some quick values here and there and some lights. I will call that done for now, we may come back to it later when we study light and shadows to dig even more into this great concept piece. And this is the final image with its parts. Finally we are gonna study this amazing old master painting from probably one of the greatest landscape artists of all time, Mr. Albert Bierstadt. The painting is called the Sierra Nevada. What an amazing painting. Now look at all these elements that you can pick and study on its own. You can pick up the trees, the mountains, the animals, or the sky. So let's just start with drawing some trees.
Also, the SWAT G trunk seems good to draw. Some of the animal section sneaked in in this uh, landscape section, but it's okay, it's got to draw. Now let's try drawing this beautiful mountain. Adding the water in white is just a cool touch. Now we have all the parts done, let's do a quick sketch of the whole thing. It's a very quick sketch, but I can have a feel of the general elements in it, so that's enough for me. Of course I can spend another 10 hours making it perfect, but the idea here is not to copy, just to learn and understand your subject. So we can leave it here and move on to the final section. The final section is the architecture and interior, and we're gonna start with this master painting first, from the Swedish art master Johan Richter, painting of a great canal in Italy. This is a good example of architecture in the 18th century. Not only you can practice good classic architecture, but you can see how things were almost 300 years ago. So I'm gonna start with the collection of buildings on the right. This painting is a two point perspective, but the second vanishing point is so far off to the right, it's almost a one point perspective. So to make things easier, I'm just gonna draw it as a one point perspective. In later lessons, we may actually change perspectives of the object we study from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, and vice versa. You don't have to go into too much details, just get a sense of the subject you are trying to draw. I found myself copying a little bit so I decided to jump to a different part of the painting, to the little ship in front of the building. Now I got my brain back into action and back to drawing the main building in the painting. Architecture may be the least interesting subject to artists, so zoning out is a big risk here. So always be wary of the state of your mind as you're drawing.
Let's continue to the other building on the far horizon. Now let's make it a bit more fun and do some ships and the people on it. Here is an interesting winged lion statue to draw. And there you have it, almost 10 parts came out of this one single painting. You can continue to draw the whole thing but for the sake of saving time this video is already way too long. So let's move on to the second example. This is the Siena Cathedral in Siena, Tuscany in Italy. A marvel of Gothic medieval architecture. A great example to study the Gothic style of architecture. It's way too complicated and too detailed to draw the whole thing. So let's pick some interesting part to study. I found a really high resolution picture online and that would really help a lot with studying some details on it. I will do a quick sketch first from the for the basic shape of the whole building just to understand the general forms. Next I will do the highest tower in the back. It's just amazing how many sculptures this building have, it's everywhere. It's really interesting that you can study figure drawing from an architecture building. That's something I would have not done if I was just copying. These sculptures would have just looked like lines and shapes and nothing else not like a figure drawing but now they are separated from the building i see them as people and figure drawing now i'm really enjoying this part of the study just be careful while drawing sculpture on the top side of the building the perspective is at an extreme angle they are so high above the horizon line so it's not just like drawing it from a front view it's a higher angle and you are looking up toward it so you are seeing the bottom of the shapes on the sculpture more Next I'm gonna draw this column, it looks very interesting. Ok let's do something a bit more complicated, this part of the tower is completely detailed. So I'll try to simplify it as much as possible, doing more freehand than perspective as possible. Not as a rule, but just for time's sake.
very complicated shape but I got the general idea of how the gothic style work it's mostly triangles and lots and lots of sculptures Next, let's do the main entrance. This must have taken ages sculpting all these details. You just get a certain appreciation to the style as you are drawing it. Sadly I drew another part but the video capture software crashed on me as I was trying to save it so that part is lost forever. Oh well, let's do this final part of the base column on the left of the entrance. Alright, I just did maybe 30% of what the picture was offering. You can do way more with this one photo. But as you can see, it can be very rewarding. The final example of this lesson is an interior concept from another amazing Russian artist, Alex Pavlovich. Go check her art station page. It's just beyond amazing. So this shot is probably made with the help from a 3D software, maybe. So I'm trying to figure out the perspective first before I start studying the parts. Knowing the perspective first will help you draw things much easier, especially man-made objects. So this is the basic layout of the room in simplified shape. 
Now let's draw some elements, starting with this box shelf and globe. Let's draw these suitcases next. Now let's do the bed table and some accessories. And another box shelf. Now let's check the panels on front of the desk. Finally, let's check out the desk itself, the box shelf and the armchair on the right.
All these elements come out from a single image. What a great workout to learn how to do props as a concept artist. As you can see here, not once I was drawing on automatic, I was focused, learning exactly what I'm looking at. And I studied over 100 different objects from only 15 images. So this is much better way to study, not to mention saving so much time copying small details that won't help you later on. If you study this way, you will understand your subject much better. You will understand the function behind it, the design, the style that made it what it is. And you will remember all these small details later on, because you didn't copy it, you were present while you are drawing it. So this is the lecture part, now let's go into the homework. If you want to follow up and do the same exercises I did, there are two options for you to choose. An easy mode or a hard mode. The easy mode you can pick up one of these five subjects that you are interested in, choose five different reference photos for that subject, for example, five different characters or five animals, and dissect each one into a full page of studies. Make sure that every reference photo turn into at least five different drawings. You can go all the way to 10 for each reference photo if you want. This way we will end up with 50 different studies from 5 different images. The hard mode on the other hand, if you are up to it, pick up all the 5 subjects we covered in this video and find 5 reference photos for each subject and fill one page with each reference photo, dissecting 10 different parts from each reference photo if you can. If you can, just do 5 for each. This way you're gonna end up with 250 different studies from 25 images. Have fun. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this first lesson from the final book of the art journey series. As you can see, it's way more advanced and hard work than the last two books. So keep your coffees slash Red Bulls ready for this one. Cause it's gonna be a long, long road ahead and much more complicated as we move on. But I promise it's gonna change the way you draw and create forever. We drill our first hole in the wall. There is a long, long way to the other side. So stay strong and healthy. Before I go, I'd like to thank all my Patreon who donated to my channel. If you'd like to donate to my channel, please go to patreon.com slash rainwalker. Thank you all for your generosity. Okay, that's it for this video. Hope it wasn't boring or too long. If you have any question about this lesson, please leave a comment below. If you have any critique for the way I'm presenting the lesson, please let me know as well so we can fine tune these videos as we go along. Best of luck with your homework, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.